Now in this episode I'm going to discuss phenylalanine and tyrosine which is the share of common pathway then a couple of diseases related to amino acid catabolism um, PKU and MSUD and that will be it for the amino acids for now because well it's not that complex a subject transamination break down the skeletal chain so phenyl and tyrosine share a common pathway as we've said with phenyl going to tyrosine requiring tetrahydrobioterin THF and tyrosine is transaminated by tyrosine amide transferase and as I said your transferases require the PLP so as it shows here nice reaction flow now this one thing phenyl only get your tetrahydrobioterin and an oxygen going out to your dihydro and H2O and this react is immediate phenylalanine goes to tyrosine as you can see it's hydroxylate here so an OH group added there alpha ketoglutarate to glutamate which is your transferase reaction so it loses this NH3 and gains a bone group as it says hydroxyphenylpyruvate the pyruvate group here. P stands for para, so it's on the opposite side, this benzene ring. And the hydroxyphenol, which is basically this benzene ring with the OH attached. So from there, you get your para hydroxyphenol pyruvate. And O2 goes in, CO2 comes out. So now you've got homogeneity, which POH has moved to here, and another one has bonded on there. And you've also lost this middle carbon, well, that's a strange way to put it in you lost this carbon and bonded another oxygen to this one so the uh, O2 comes in and you end up with malonyl 4 malonyl acetoacetate which is this compound here which you don't need no structure of it all you go down the 4 fumaryl acetoacetate which then Hydrolysis breaks down fumarate and acetoacetate. So that is the simple breakdown of phenylalanine and tyrosine. Now, phenylalanine is heavily related to this disease PKU, as I'm going to discuss in a minute. So it's called phenylketonuria. Now, PKU for short is generally, it's relatively common and it's not as normal as. Oh, I've written it wrong here. It's an autosomal recessive disorder, not a dominant. Deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase causes your classical PKU or your PKU1. And as such, tyrosine becomes an essential amino acid because your body can't get enough of this. Generally, it doesn't produce much of it, and phenylalanine is the main way of producing tyrosine. You don't get much of it either. So, you end up with tyrosine meaning of central amino acid and elevated phenylalanine as that builds up as it can't break down and you reduce tyrosine in your serum. Your phenylalanine is instead metabolized to form phenylpyruvate, phenylacetate and phenyl lactate, which are excreted in the urine which causes a musty smell. Reduced tyrosine levels also leads to low melanin levels as tyrosine is used to produce this pigment which lowers the pigmentation of skin and hair so you end up with a bit lighter coloured skin and hair and limiting phenylalanine in the diet and supplement with tyrosine is generally the accepted treatment for this condition it's generally screened at birth using a heel prick test so and the other one I mentioned was MSUD which is maple syrup urine disease it's caused by a deficiency in the branch ch al chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase results in your branch chain amino acids accumulating and their relative keto acids so said here you've got basically it's isoleucine, valine and leucine to increase it leads to ketosis and uh, kind of smell of maple syrup in you which is the first symptom of well and it's actually quite difficult to treat. The theorized treatment is by dietary restriction of amino acids that are branched, as you think. However, it's the main problem is that the branched chain amino acids are quite abundant in most protein sources. They're all essential, you can't synthesize them. And a catabolic state mobilized 
tissue protein, which then releases amino acids to metabolism. So, the main way they're thinking about getting on this is supplementation of dietary thiamine, which is a coenzyme, may be useful in some patients that have an enzyme with low coenzyme efficiency. So, if it's just because the branched chain of keto acid dehydrogenase, that's a low, low affinity for the thiamine, what you can do is give them extra thiamine and hopefully that will push it forward. At the moment, diet and thiamine are pretty much the only ways we can think of treatment. Diet is quite difficult to treat. Anyway, thank you for listening and I appreciate your time.